Dr. Warren Hoffler. He is the founder of XGene Corporation. He's also an adjunct professor here at Dominican University. And his talk will be about the business of stem cells. Please welcome Dr. Hoffler. Well, I felt compelled uh, to bring up the business of stem cells because if you're like me, you might find out about the world in The Economist or reading the business section of the newspaper. And certainly in Northern California, uh, technology industries have really contributed a lot to our standard of living here. So how does this all work? In the Bay Area, there are about 800 life science companies, and they employ about 80,000 people. So it's a, a generator of uh, wages that total about $5.8 billion a year. And we have about 10% of the worldwide uh, life science companies here, roughly, because there are, by one estimate anyway, about 8,000 life science companies. So if we have 800, um, we're doing pretty well. Uh, of these 8,000, there's 180 companies that say that they're dedicated stem cell companies. But so many of the other companies now are incorporating stem cell technologies into what they do that that statistic is not all that meaningful. What is meaningful is that there's a lot of momentum uh, currently in the business environment to going towards stem cell studies. So what's driving this phenomenon? Well, it's just the stem cell itself. And I think as you've heard today, uh, stem cells are very powerful cells in the body, uh, the most powerful cells in a sense. And so to, biologists focusing on these cells makes a lot of sense to them. And so there's an inherent fact there that's going to make stem cells important, and that's not going to go away. So there's no turning back in a sense to our, to our commitment to studying stem cells. And um, now I'd like to quickly go over sort of how do these companies arise? How does a stem cell company get funded? Um, how do they become founded and then get the funding that they need in order to, to grow and to uh, contribute to what's uh, needed? Well, the way that this really happens is kind of piecemeal and it happens in a lot of different ways, but often there's some government funding um, so, uh, and there's also local funding, so certainly having CIRM's contribution is going to be helpful. Uh, to small companies. And in business in general, there's uh, a re strong relationship between risk and reward, right? So if you have to take a lot of risks and you put money in, you expect that you're going to get a big reward because after all, it might not happen. So it's got to, um, it has to go all that way. And so by reducing the risk with some financial backing at the beginning, these companies are more likely to take the steps necessary to bring products to market. So who are these companies? I thought I'd mention a few of the local companies. Um, one of the questions earlier was about uh, diabetes, and um, there's a local company in Menlo Park called Geron Corporation, and they, they have a long history of uh, doing some very innovative work, and they've been there for the beginning of stem cell biology as well. Um, you might recall that they were the company that uh, bought into the uh, Roslyn Institute cloning of the sheep, Dolly the sheep. So, um, Geron has been around, and they have a strong commitment to stem cells. And they, uh, more recently, were the funding behind uh, Thompson's uh, isolation of the inner cell mass and the human embryonic stem cells. So their money has been traveling around. Um, how do they get that money? Where, where is that coming from? They, they have some support, I suppose, from uh, public sources, but it's really rather limited. It's the fact that it's a publicly held company. So they have about, uh, if you look at their balance sheet, they say that they have about $6, billion, uh, $6 million in assets. But if you look at their total valuation in the stock market, it's about $66 million. So that valuation, that, those millions of dollars, give them the opportunity to um, issue new shares of stock and to use that money to finance some of the things that they think are important. So the private sector is very important for advancing the stem cell cause. Other companies like Oncomed have been focusing on the application of stem cells in cancer. And uh, the company that I started, we're interested, obviously, in the genetic engineering aspect of this. Um, and uh, tissue engineering can be done in order to um, facilitate wound healing and corneal replacements as examples. 
So I'll get to that at the end. I want to show you a few pictures of what the science is that uh, XGene is doing, because that's obviously the most interesting to me. But just to mention further, uh, some local companies, Advanced Cell Technology in Alameda and Stem Cells in Palo Alto are taking the, um, uh, the tact that they want to actually do cell therapy. So they'll take the stem cells and they'll put them back into the body and there's so many different diseases that could be treated, and you've heard about some of them this morning, but just to sort of list them um, even in more detail, uh, or less detail here, but at least a list, uh, myoblast for heart failure, uh, hemangioblast for blood disorders, retinal pigment epithelial cells for macular gen degeneration, neuronal cells for spinal cord injury, liver, liver cells for hepatitis and cirrhosis. So just to give you some perspective, the stem cell field is, uh, has the promise of really making a difference for curing disease. But how, do, how does it work currently in the business environment? Uh, there are some blockbuster drugs that have been developed in the last few years, so I thought I'd list a few of them here. And just to give you perspective that a blockbuster drug is bringing in over a billion dollars a year in revenue. So the commitment of California to put in three billion over 10 years is perhaps not that outrageous. It's, and when you think about the benefit, not just in terms of uh, reducing human suffering and healing disease, but um, also in generating um, wealth and um, having a good return on your investment. So uh, one of the drugs that I think is miraculous, uh, tenofovir from Gilead, uh, is the nucleotide analog that's used in AIDS. And uh, if it wasn't for this drug and for the cocktails of nucleotide analogs that are currently available, there would be uh, probably millions of deaths additional from the AIDS virus. So there's a, a, a humane principle there at work, but it's also um, a good generator of wealth, and Gilead has been a very strong company locally. The second example I give is Gleevec, and Gleevec was developed by Big Pharma, uh, Novartis, um, just to say, well, that's a, that's a new drug as well. It inhibits tyrosine kinases. Um, but, you know, cancers that couldn't be treated before are now treated successfully with Gleevec. And I actually have a friend um, that I worked with in the past and who uh, I was very concerned about when she came down with um, gastrointestinal um, stromal tumors. And uh, ordinarily, she would have passed away, but her life was spared, and it's because of Gleevec. So I think those, that's a wonderful drug. And in uh, Genentech, of course, with Avastin, making an anti-VEGF antibody. So VEGF is vascular endothelial growth factor. So that controls the vascularization of a tumor, and vascularization is, is really key in the body. So now on to the science that we're doing at XGene Corporation. Uh, it focuses on the skin, and I would be a, a, a little bit more, um, um, it, want to give you more of an introduction about skin, except that you've heard about skin because it's come up locally, uh, first on the somatic cell nuclear transfer, the nuclei that they were using for those experiments were often skin cells. So they would put the, the skin nuclei into uh, an egg cell, and that would give rise to a stem cell or that's the beginning of cloning, actually, um, <clears throat> a stem cell that can develop fully into a um, mature embryo. And then the second thing is this programmed um, or induced um, pluripotent cells, the, the idea of taking a stem cell and actually introducing genes such as HOX4 or SOX2, uh, or I mean <laughs> OCT4 or, or SOX2 and some of these other genes that are transcription factors and they will, will reprogram a somatic cell into being an embryonic cell, potentially. So skin cells have taken on some interest. But in addition to that, from a company perspective, if you, uh, it was mentioned um, by Dr. Sam Brano that um, <clears throat> currently the, the number of applications for, stem, for any kind of cell therapy are very limited. So there's this discussion about uh, a new modality being required. I mean, how does one uh, successfully treat patients using cells. We're used to drugs, and after all, I just listed a bunch of blockbuster drugs, but those are not blockbuster cell therapies. So this whole idea of cell therapies is really quite new. Uh, if you look at the current state of things right now, um, <clears throat> there are about 80 to 90% of the cell therapies that 
occur today in, uh, in clinics have to do with just grafting skin. And there's a company called Organogenesis that makes Applegraft. And so they grow up some skin uh, using their technology and they graft that onto a patient. And so that, if that accounts for 80 to 90 percent of what's going on, it's certainly reasonable to think that skin as a cell therapy is, could be one of the early uh, types of treatment that will be available. So at our company, we were isolating adult stem cells. So not embryonic stem cells, but the stem cells that exist as pools right in the skin itself. And what we found is that by making a couple of fairly subtle changes that we were able to not only isolate these cells, but to propagate them so we can um, do some serial passaging of them. I have to tell you though, it's pretty hard and the yields are pretty low and um, the stability is not perfect. And so there is certainly a big advantage to using embryonic stem cells. Nonetheless, what we did see here is uh, circular colonies, actually go back one, the circular colonies on the dish is pretty unique, but nearly if you plate out cells, they'll form a more uniform um, lawn across the plate. So, just to mention that there are a couple of uh, key markers for stem cells. There's a lot of uh, debate about what exactly is a stem cell in the different parts of the body and in blood cells these markers are well defined, but in skin they're not so well defined. What, there seems to be some agreement though that um, having less CD71, which is the transfer, transfer and receptor, if you have less of that, and if you have more of CD49, which is an alpha-4 integrin receptor, whatever that is, um, this sort of pattern is characteristic of what a stem cell should be in the skin. So our technology basically amounts to uh, growing up keratinocytes, which are the epithelial cell of the skin, and fibroblasts. And so you can expand these populations in tissue culture incubators. And that's important because if you're going to graft uh, a patient that suffered from a burn or has a, has a surgery that you want to repair, um, expanding that population is a real benefit. Currently what's done in hospitals is if, if you are lacking skin in one area of your body, they take a, a graft from another section, right? Something from your, your thigh or buttocks ends up um, on your torso. Um, so it's a real advantage to be able to expand these cell populations in incubators. What we're able to do is just um, trypsinize or uh, uh, release the cells that are growing from the tissue culture plate, mix them together into a cell slurry, and by the process of spontaneous cell sorting, uh, cells migrate into distinct epithelial and mesenchymal layers or in the skin we're dealing with the epidermis and the dermis. So these uh, structures reappear and what you get in the end is something that looks like this at the top where you've recreated skin from skin cells that have been passaged in a tissue culture incubator. Uh, the quality of the AccuSkin that we can make is directly dependent upon our ability to isolate stem cells. So um, interestingly you'll see along the interface between dermis and epidermis, sort of more cuboidal looking cells. Those are basal cells and some of those, about one in 10 or one in 20, are stem cells. Most of the stem cells in the skin actually hang out by the hair follicles, uh, but there are interfollicular stem cells as well. In any case, the, the AccuSkin methodology gives us a, a chance to recreate a more complex structure. It's not really a tissue, it's an organ. There are multiple cell types present. And, um, we're hoping that organizations like CIRM, for example, has set aside $87 million, I think it is, for tissue engineering applications. And so, you know, this sort of uh, tissue engineering feat of being able to reconstruct more complex structures from cells that are initially passaged in tissue culture could be quite useful. And then this is the pretty much the uh, final si slide before my conclusion. And that's to say, sometimes when you do science, you come up with some pretty surprising things. So we were setting out to just make regular skin, and was, so we were growing up these two major cell types of the skin. And what we found when we were mixing them together and letting them migrate, that a lot of the times we were ending up with um, a structure that we didn't quite understand. And what we had here, uh, in retrospect now, looking at it, is that the epithelia is on the bottom and the fibroblasts are on the top. And the epithelia at the bottom doesn't look normal, it's spongy. Uh, which means it's very loose and there's sort of circular holes uh, in, in that sponge. And so what we speculate is that it's actually the epithelia of your body that uh, 
creates a, um, a scaffold that is required for wound healing. So um, we've worked to show that um, vitronectin is expressed in this, in this spongy structure, which would attract endothelial cells because they have the receptors, um, the integrin receptors that recognize that particular protein. And so um, it's really quite spectacular that uh, by doing experiments of mixing cells that you could come up with some basic understanding about how wound healing works. And I had mentioned before that about organogenesis and that they're a company that is making um, in vitro skin and that they are, uh, account for 80 to 90 percent of the cell therapy that's currently done on a yearly basis. Um, that actually the interesting thing about their therapy is that it does, the cells don't survive. So they put a graft onto a, a wound and there's benefit from having living cells there because those living cells produce factors that allow the wound closure and wound healing, potentially. But as far as the cells persisting at that site, they don't persist. So one of the real challenges to stem cell biology in general is going to be once we isolate these cells and if we differentiate them into important lineages, how are we going to get them back into the, uh, into the patient? And one way has been to inject these cells and hope that they home to the correct areas. But perhaps they will also home to other areas of the body. And certainly the FDA is going to be very interested in trying to uh, map where the cells go to and what they cause. And if there's a connection between cancer cells and stem cells, then that's a potential problem. Nonetheless, we see a way out because here um, we've taken cells and we've created more complex structures, a graftable material that could be put back onto your body at a specific location. And so um, this could be uh, the beginning of something that's important. And the fact that it's connected to the vascularization of the tissue, the spongy material at the bottom inviting endothelial cells in, this could give a way for us to be able to accomplish uh, revascularization of cells that are grafted into the body, and I think that would be an important thing. So the final slide is just the conclusions. Um, a very strong push for industry's involvement in, on, in the stem cell work and, uh, and our conclusions that, um, that the tissue engineering applications uh, are useful as well. Thank you.